Hey everyone. <laughs> Rachel Leah Gerson here from Doorway to Self and I am hopping on for January 2019's live psychic and energy Q&A session. So whenever you guys come on, I'm just going to take these off for the glare and I also am able to just like whir, when I have them off. Anywho, um, uh, hi, thanks for joining. Um, uh, actually, key point, that's uh, one of the things I do in sessions. So if you're ever in private session with me, you'll notice that I pull my hair down and take my glasses off because it's kind of like, if you've ever seen the movie Inception, <laughs> he has the um, spinning top to kind of keep him, okay, this is reality, this is dreaming world. Um, and so I, I actually remove um, my glasses and take my hair down to kind of get me into more of a um, psychic state, if you will. So normally on informational sessions like this, I won't go there, but I just kind of have this intuition that that needs to happen today. So I'm going to listen to it. Hi, thanks for coming on. So uh, the name of the game, if you guys have not uh, been on for one of these sessions before, is that you can hop on and just, if you're on Instagram, hi Instagram, if you're on Facebook, hi Facebook, um, you're gonna notice my eyes are shifting between screens because I am filming on two different things right now. Um, but if you have any sorts of questions or inquiries or, well, that's the same word. <laughs> oh boy, um, anywho. If you have anything that you are curious about, about the psychic world, about the energetic world, about how those things intersect with the world of mental health and emotional well-being, um, uh, literally anything, tarot, numerology, astrology, whatever, um, I'm here to help answer those questions. If I do not know the answer, I will let you know that I don't know the answer and I will go do my research on it and I'll get back to you and I will let you know. Um, I just finished writing an article about um, energy ethics when working with a practitioner and one of the things I wrote about was if your practitioner who you're working with thinks that they know everything and does not admit when they don't know something, um, get out of that room. Stop working with them because there's no way they have every answer to every question. So um, if you're working with a practitioner who says, yeah, you know what, I don't know, let me check that out and I'll get back to you, you're in good hands. So um, I'm going to go ahead since I don't have any questions just yet. It looks like people are still kind of hopping on. Um, and if you are wanting to um, go back, if you're hopping on the middle or something like that, you missed the question, um, I do post these videos replays onto YouTube. So if you look up Doorway to Self on YouTube, there are already three there from September, October, and November. Um, and I actually, the September's doesn't have it, but October and November I went through and I um, marked out um, all of the sections where there are, um, where I start a new question and answer. Um, so you can find, you can look to see what questions were asked and answered and go straight to those minutes um, on there. And I'll be doing the same thing with this video as well. So um, yeah, so hey, Allie, thanks for coming on. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just start out with some questions that um, were emailed to me while we're waiting for more people to come on and ask, question, ask questions. Um, I do do these monthly, and if there's something that you're like, ooh, I don't really want my Aunt Catherine to see that I asked this question, um, or you know something like that, if there's something you're a little skeeved out about putting out there in public, um, just feel free to email it to me at doorwaytoself at gmail.com and I'll ask it um, in the next, and answer it <laughs> in the next uh, video and I'll do it anonymously. So you can do that. Um, let's see, Allie says, your ritual for the wolf moon, wolf moon was amazing. Ah, I'm so happy to hear that. Um, yeah, so <laughs> thanks for bringing that up. So um, if you're wanting rituals monthly, I'm, I'm actually about to upload the one for the new moon probably tomorrow, um, which is on Monday, by the way, if you're not aware, the new moon in Aquarius is on Monday. Um, but if you're wanting rituals for new moon, full moon, solstice, equinoxes, um, numerological portal days, the whole nine yards, um, I do have a Patreon account. Um, hey, Alex. So you can go to patreon.com slash doorway to self, and that's where you will find um, an ability to subscribe for as little as $1 to get all of those rituals 
um, and I do I do put a new one out for every single one of those special events. Um, and there are also different tiers, so you can kind of choose some different things if you want and get some goodies alongside that, because if those aren't goodies enough already, um, but if you're wanting to kind of get a preview of what those look like, the um, full blood moon um, that just happened, I put that ritual out for free to the public. So you can check that out, see what you'd be getting if you become a subscriber, if you become a patron. Um, I would love to have you on the Dory to Self team in that capacity, and uh, yeah, so thanks for saying that, Ali. I really appreciate it. Um, okay, we're going to jump in. So, um, let's see. Uh, we're going to start kind of simple here. So, is talking with angels considered psychic, and is it a Christian thing? This was one of the anonymous questions that I got from last month. Um, so, uh, yeah, talking to anything that's energetic, um, that's not in our 3D realm. And if you don't know what 3D versus 4D versus 5D, all that stuff is, I did answer that in the November Q&A. So you can go ahead to YouTube and look that up. Don't forget to subscribe and share it if you really appreciate it. Um, but anywho, if you're communicating with anything that is not, hey, Sus, not in this earthly realm, um, then yes, you are using psychic abilities to do it. And you may be using different psychic abilities. So some people have this notion, right, that if you're going to be communicating with something, you have to see it, you have to hear it, you have to feel it. Um, but you may be somebody who has only one of those abilities. And I don't say only one, as in like, oh, you poor thing, you only have one ability, right? Um, psychic abilities are fluid, and you can develop abilities as you go through your life, right? So I'll give you an example. Um, I did not used to have clairescence, um, which is psychic scent, um, and I developed it last summer just kind of out of the blue. It showed up. Um, on the flip side, on the other hand, when I was 20, I completely lost everything aside from clear empathy, which is the ability to psychically take on another person's emotions or feelings as your own. Um, and clairsentience. I think I had both of those at that point. So but the point is, you can lose abilities, you can gain abilities, um, you can have every ability on the gamut um, for, you know, 10 years and then all of a sudden lose everything. Um, or you could have, you know, one thing and then gain them all back. This is a really long-winded answer to the question. But um, the point is, is that, yes, if you are talking with angels, Angels are not um, necessarily a physical thing. There are human angels. I do believe that. I do believe that there are humans who just carry that angelic frequency and they're here to help and heal and change. Um, and and I, I wrote an article about that that... Um, I've been writing a lot of articles recently, guys. I'm really excited about it. But I'll, I'll hopefully be putting that out um, pretty soon here. Um, but anywho... <sighs> Uh, so much talking. <laughs> um, yes, so talking with angels is psychic. You are using some sort of psychic ability to communicate with that, uh, with that frequency. And even if it is a person, you're still perceiving that frequency in some way, shape, or form, right? So that's still a psychic thing. Um, and is it only a Christian thing? No, absolutely not. Um, if you can communicate with angelic frequencies, you can communicate with angelic frequencies. Um, angels are very much associated with Christianity and especially in the Catholic tradition. Um, they're also, uh, you know, I grew up Jewish and my mom would always talk to me about angels when I was little and, and angel frequencies and stuff like that. Um, I no longer um, practice uh, Jewish as a religion or Judaism as a religion. Um, but, you know, even in pagan cultures, you see, I mean, it's it's really kind of a cloth across the globe. I believe there's an angel who comes and, and speaks to Muhammad as well in, in um, Muslim religions. And um, so it's in the Muslim religion. What am I talking about? Anyways, um, <laughs> um, well, I guess there are different sects. Okay, I digress. The point is, no, it's not just a Christian thing. Let's see if I have any extra, any new questions. Nope, not quite yet. Um, so again, if you guys have questions, if any of this sparks an idea and you're like, oh, I want to know X, Y, Z, pop that in. Um, or if you came on here specifically with a burning question, go ahead and put it in. I'm just going to keep uh, blabbing away so I can get through as many questions as I can within the hour. 
cool. You guys like that. I like that you like that. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. We're, we're, <laughs> we're going to go here, guys. We're, <laughs> um, okay. So, um, Marilyn did not want to be kept an anonymous, so here's Marilyn's question. I feel that the American Indians had the true connection to spirit. What do you think? Um, okay. So, um, firstly, I'm going to say thank you so much, Marilyn, for this question because I feel that this is something really prominent right now that needs to be educated about. Um, so... I've found that, and this is starting to get cold out, I've found that in spiritual communities or in this kind of new age belief system or, you know, whatever, um, that Native Americans as a whole are all pulled together and that every single tribe's beliefs are made to be one. Um, and that's just, this is just a pet peeve of mine. Um, I don't agree with that. Um, to me, that's like saying all Latino cultures are the same or all African cultures are the same or, you know, whatever that is, that every single person has the same belief. And that's just not true. Um, you know, every single Native American tribe is completely different and they come from different belief systems um, and they have different spiritualities that are guiding them. And um, so to kind of do this lumping thing, and say um, American Indians had the true connection to spirit. Um, I think it's just like any other culture, right? There are some people who have a greater connection to spirit than other people. Um, there are many Native American tribes, not all of them, but there are many Native American tribes that were um, extremely um, connected to higher self and really promoted that within their culture or their religion or their spirituality. Um, but I wouldn't lump every single um, native person into, into that. Um, just like I wouldn't lump every single Druid into that or every single, um, uh, spiritual Catholic into that or any, you know, I, I think that connection with spirit is a completely non-cultured, non-gendered, non-racial, non-religious thing. Um, so, that's my answer to that. I, we had to get a little political there, guys. So, <laughs> um, But thank you, Marilyn, for that question, because it is important that we talk about that and open that conversation up. Um, Cassie says, where do we submit questions? Great question. <laughs> um, so right where you just wrote that comment, that's where you submit questions. Unless you want them to be kept anonymous, in which case you can email them to dory to self at gmail.com. Um, but if you do that now, I will not get to the questions until next time. So I save anonymous questions between the Q and A's. But if you're on Facebook, um, you're gonna see a little, um, you're gonna see a little bar that says, write a comment with your little icon picture next to it. It says write a comment and that's where you put your uh, question in. You submit it. If you're on Instagram, um, you're going to see a little thing that says uh, underneath everybody else's comments or joined or whatever. You're going to see a little tiny bubble that says comment and it says dot, dot, dot. And then you see all of these little symbols next to it. You're going to type right into that comment box and that's how you can submit questions. Thank you for asking that, Cassie. I'm sorry that that wasn't, um, that wasn't made clear. Um, I'm excited to hear your question. <laughs> um, and thank you for coming on. Let's see. All right. Um, my child is extremely energetically sensitive. How do I help her? Oh my goodness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the anonymous person who asked this because this is so vital for every parent to hear. Um, and I'm, I'm so impressed by all of the parents I've been seeing in my office lately. Um, I've been getting a lot of parents, men and women, um, who have come in to talk specifically about their children and saying, you know what? 
I don't know how to deal with this because I was never taught how to deal with my own stuff. And then we work together on not only their child's stuff and how to act as a parent with this child, you know, this, I call it psychic parenting, right? But also how they're able to deal with their own abilities and learn their own abilities. And through learning themselves, they're able to help their children. And through helping their children, they're able to learn about themselves. And it's really just such an incredible thing. I'm really excited that this has started to um, kind of slide into my office as of late the last couple of weeks really it's been a it's been a big thing big theme so thank you to all of the parents out there um who are who are caring uh for their children in this way um and and scaffolding their children in this way um so my first piece of advice on that front would be to listen to them what are they explaining? What is it that they're feeling? And really listen to the words, right? Listen to the words that they're using. Are they saying, I see things that would be clairvoyance. I hear things that would be clairaudience. I smell things that would be clairessence. Um, I, I feel things that could be clear empathy, clear sentience, or clear tangency. Um, uh, clear, uh, I taste things, clear gustins. Um, I, oh, or I just know. I just I just know things, um, and that would be clear cognizance. And if you don't know what any of these things are, guess what? I'm on that article writing road, guys. So I have a bunch of articles I'm about to pump out at you um, <laughs> that explain every single one of those things um, in detail as to what they are and how you know if you're experiencing them. Um, so, but you know, the little snippet I gave of whatever adjectives you hear them using, that way you can kind of put into boxes how they're experiencing things. Um, so that's the first step, is how are they experiencing things? Second step, I would say, is how severely are they experiencing things, right? So I've had parents come in who their, their children are dealing with night terrors every single night, um, and it's, it's just bur it's a huge burden and both for the child and for the parent, right? Because the child's experiencing these really, really traumatic terrors, um, in, in dreamland and then they wake up and what do they do? They run to mommy and daddy's room and they knock on the door and it's 3 a.m. and they crawl into bed and, you know, it's, it's kind of, um, you know, I shouldn't have said mommy and daddy's door, but you guys get it. Um, because it could be mommy, mommy, et cetera, et cetera, so on and so forth. I'm trying to be inclusive here because I believe in that very big. I believe in that very big. Um, but anywho, the point is, whew, running out of breath. The point is, um, listen to, um, listen first, step one, listen for how they're experiencing the abilities. Step two, listen to how severely they're experiencing the abilities. So Night Terrors was one example. Another example would be, um, I had a mom come to me last week who was worried because her child was just not able to handle social situations. It was like every time she walked out of the door, and I've seen this multiple times. This isn't just last week. I've had parents approach me with this over the last several years, um, that their child is just too, they experience too much when they go outside. They either see too many things or hear too many things or feel everything and um, and so where I would go with that next, the next step, once you kind of gauge how severe it is, um, teach your child how to ground and clear. And if you don't know what that is, um, I do have a, a grounding YouTube video available. So again, if you search Doorway to Self on YouTube, um, it should pop up. Um, I have a grounding song as well, which is kind of, kind of jazzy and fun, especially for young kiddos, right? Um, so, uh, and I can sing that one real quick to you so that you have it. So um, it's really simple. It just goes, I am in this room. I am on this ground. I am in my body. I am safe and sound. And then you just continuously repeat that and repeat that. Um, and you can have your kid like clap their hands or pat their body. When I sing it, I usually I sing it after every single client, and I'm always like, boom, on my thighs, on my butt, on my arms, on my head, just everything. I even go all the way down and start 
kind of like hitting the tops of my feet, sometimes even the bottoms of them as well. Um, so, um, so that's a great one for young kiddos, but also if you're trying to just access your inner child and clear everything out and really get into your body, it's a great one for adults too and everyone in between. Um, so that's a good one. Um, but I also, like I said, have other grounding and clearing techniques up on YouTube as well. Um, and I believe it's like the second video I ever made. So you're going to have to kind of go way back or you can just click most views because I think it's the one with the most views. But anywho, um, yes. So that would be step three. Um, and step four, if you get through all of those things and you're still like, I don't know what to do. Um, send them to me because I work with kids and teens and young adults. So um, in addition to adults. So uh, if that's something where you're like, you're feeling really stuck, I mean, I, I really try to give you guys as much as, as I can so that you can kind of, you know, feel empowered to do things on your own and, um, and et cetera. But if you're feeling stuck and you're feeling like, okay, you know what? It's time to it's time to have a chat one on one with Rachel and really explain my kid's situation. Um, or if you feel like it's important for them to talk directly to me, um, then then we can absolutely do that. And I work in person and also online. So if you're in the UK or LA or Utah or wherever you are, and you're like, oh shoot, I wish I lived in Michigan so I could work with Rachel. Um, that's uh, not necessary. We can just hop on Zoom or Facebook uh, video chat or Google Hangouts and do things there. So thank you to the anonymous person who asked that question. Um, it looks like we do have a few questions on here. So I'm going to see. Mary says, I just hopped on. Not sure what the question form is about. Certain topic. Um, Mary, hi. Thanks for joining. Um, no, absolutely not. Uh, you can ask whatever you want. This is a completely open forum. Um, and to anybody new, anyone else new who joined, um, please feel free to just put your questions in the box about anything and everything. Um, and I will do my best to answer them within the hour. And if not, um, if there are any questions left over, I will answer them next time. Okay. Let's see. Cassie says, how do you balance or find frequency with someone you seem to always butt heads with? Trying to navigate through communication and finding we are always hitting a wall. This is someone who I have to work with, P.S. This is a person who always feels the need to say things and be done with them, or I feel the need to question. Okay, this is a good question. So, thanks for asking. Um, so... The best thing you can do in this case, because a lot of the time when people either need to have the last word or um, or they, they feel like they always know the answers or they don't like questions, a lot of the time that's coming from a place of fear and it's coming from a place of fear of the unknown, fear that they don't know or that they don't have the answers. Um, fear of you knowing more than them, fear of you being able to know more than them because you're not afraid to ask the questions. Um, and, you know, you say it's someone you have to work with. I don't know what their position is, but I'm assuming it's somebody who's in a higher position than you. Um, and so in a lot of, a lot of times questions um, if they don't know the answer to that. And this is why I was saying earlier, if you have, a, if you're working with a practitioner of any sort who pretends to know all the answers get the hell out because um this is this is a similar situation right if this is your boss or manager or some someone um in a higher position than you a lot of the time they don't like questions because they don't like to admit that they don't like that they don't know the answers because it puts them in a place of not as much power in their minds to me questions are power right if you were to ask a, a question and, and a person in a place of power were to say, you know what? I don't know the answer to that. Let me go check that out. Let me go look that up. That is the ultimate source of power right there. That's someone who is really powerful because that means that not only do they have control over 
like not needing to know or not feeling fearful of the unknown, but it also means they have control over themselves to, to not feel um, less than for not knowing the answer. Um, so to answer your question, what do you do in that situation? Um, I would say, I don't know why someone thought that was funny, but someone did. <laughs> um, uh, so, so to answer your question, um, I would say that, um, I would say that it's about inner work and I know that that is probably aggravating and frustrating to hear, right? Cause you're like, Oh, I feel like I've done everything already. Um, but truly it's about how you handle the situation, right? You can't control them. And that's a lot of the reason why people will butt heads is because, one person doesn't like what the other person is doing and the other person doesn't like what the first person is doing. And so they try to control each other. And that trying to control each other is like this, like, boom. But if you can have full um, full control over yourself and full, if you come from a place of full power within yourself and you come to that person, right, and you're like, okay, you know what? That's fine. You can have the last word. I'm okay with that. I am okay with that and you walk away, um, chances are they'll actually be surprisingly um, much more willing to work things out with you. Um, and if that's not the case, if they're not willing to do that, then that's on them. And I'm sorry you have to deal with that because that is extremely frustrating. Um, but unfortunately, that's how human beings can be sometimes. So thanks for that question, Cassie. I appreciate it. Let me check on Instagram real quick here. It doesn't look like we have any questions on there, so I'll jump to the next Facebook question. So Alex says, would you be able to dive in deeper about the idea of angels as humans and what or how one would be defined or recognized? Um, oh, yay. I'm happy that you want to know more about that because, like I said, I just um, I just wrote an article about it. But... Um, the idea is, I'm not going to share too much because I, I kind of want this article to just come out and like, wham, right? So, um, but the idea is, is that, you know, every single one of us has had that experience, I'm sure. Um, and if you haven't, it's bound to come in your lifetime at some point um, where someone's helped you in a way that's really significant and, and you just never forget them. You're like, oh my gosh, like, like almost like a feeling like you, you owe the person, but not really because that would be kind of more of like a tugging or a courting. Um, it's kind of more of like this deep, sincere gratitude of like, and even if somebody didn't do it directly to you, right? Even if it's, um, a celebrity who is, um, giving food to the poor or uh, nobody who wrote a book that changed everybody's lives or, you know, something where where you just, you feel so much gratitude to that person and you feel like they've really created a huge change either in your life personally or in the life of society on this planet, um, that I would consider that to be an angel in human form for sure. So... That's a good question. Thank you. I'm excited to put this article out now. I almost just want to hit submit tonight and just be, be giving that to you guys, but I don't feel like it's the right time yet, so we'll wait. Um, Mary says, okay, great. Thank you, and so does Cassie. You're so welcome, guys. I'm happy that you, you're enjoying this. This is, it's fun for me, too, so I'm, I'm just happy I can um, give you guys the answers you've been looking for, or at least help stimulate some thought around it. Okay. Yeah, this, uh, <laughs> this current Michigan winter has my house really dry right now, so you're going to see me drinking lots of water. Um, yeah, how about that? How about that cold snow, guys? If you're not in Michigan, congratulations. That's all I have to say. Um, unless you're in Minneapolis, in which case I'm even sorrier for you. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. So the next question I had from last time is, um, oh, oh, Alex says I'm really looking forward to reading it. Yay, me too. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so the next anonymous question that came in was, what is your view on psychotropic medication? I love this question. Um, 
Okay, we're going to talk about this, guys. So there are so many people in the spiritual community who are like, drugs, bad, not natural, go away. And I'm not a drug pusher. I'm not somebody who's like, oh, yeah, you know, you clearly have some issues, so go pop that lithium, which, by the way, is like the top scale. That's like the gnarliest one you can take. Um, anywho, um, for those of you who don't know, by the way, I'm a master's of counseling student at Western currently. So I've done all of the, uh, well, not all of the, I still have tons to learn, but I've done a lot of studying on the effects of, um, medication for mental illness or for, um, emotional imbalances, stuff like that. Um, so, so I do have some sort of background knowledge that is, um, that is actually educated. Um, so here's my view on this. Firstly, I feel like people are feeling ashamed to take their medication even though it's feel making them feel better, okay? This is really dangerous because if something's working for you, there's no reason to stop doing it, right? And I've actually been there when people have muscle tested for um, synthetic pills and it has come out really strongly that they need them. Um, so, and, and if you don't know what muscle testing is, it's basically tapping into the energy of your body, um, to see if your body needs something. Um, that's the really boiled down version of, of explaining that. But the point is, is that, um, if something's working for you, there's no need to question it just because someone else is saying that it's bad. Right. There are plenty of people out there who say that, um, you know, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of something uh, who say that sitting inside and resting is bad. Right. But everyone needs to sit down and rest. And I'm not saying that everyone needs to pop pills because <laughs> not everyone needs to pop pills. Um, but I'm saying that if that's what you need to do, then that's what you need to do, especially if it's, um, you know, prescribed to you by somebody who has done the, the research to see if that's what the best thing is for you. And if you have tested yourself to see if that's the best thing for you. When I was diagnosed with bipolar, I decided not to take medication. I, I, <laughs> I have popped one pill in my whole life for, um, for anti-anxiety um and and i didn't even on one day and it was an ssri which shouldn't affect you on one day right it takes four to six weeks to kick in um but even on the first day that i that i put it in i was like oh i don't i don't like the way i feel um and um it just like it just didn't resonate with me and of course there are going to be side effects right that's why a lot of people hate ssris or um you know whatever else for for depression or bipolar or um antipsychotics for schizophrenia and stuff like that but um you know this this went beyond just like a physical feeling bad because if it's just your physical body feeling bad for a little while it might still be worth it for for your emotional state. Um, but if it's your whole being just going, no, no, this isn't right, then that's when you stop. And But don't don't quit cold turkey, please. Like, do it through a doctor and know what you're doing and know how to wean yourself off safely um, because that's very important. If you quit cold turkey on an antipsychotic or antidepressant, you might be screwing yourself over way more than staying on it and weaning off very slowly. Just saying it could be extremely dangerous. Um, who, yeah, bad idea. Not telling you to do that. I want to make that really clear. So um, anywho, the point is uh, my view on medication. I view medication as something that can be helpful depending on where you're at in life, right? If you are at a point in your life where you're like, you know what, I need that little bit of help. I need that little bit of support um, to help me through this, uh, then I say go for it. If it's something that's been subscribed to you and and uh, or prescribed to you, why did I say subscribed? If it's something that's been prescribed to you um, and it resonates with you, then do it, right? Um, I, I look at it as a tool as as a, a little little road digger right it's a little 
little road paver to help pave your, your way back until you feel safe enough and you have the tools. Now that's the important part, right? Is you can pop as many pills as you want for the rest of your life, but if you don't have the tools, you're never going to be able to wean off it. So it, medication in tandem with therapy or um, energy practice or some sort of something where you're able to learn tools to help you through that, that's when I really agree with medication if it's something that you feel that you need. So that's my answer to that. Thank you to the anonymous person who asked that. Let's see, Instagram. Y'all aren't question askers. I've noticed that people on Instagram don't like to ask questions. They just like to chill and view and people on Facebook are like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> um, so anywho, um, if you're new here, pop any question you want into the comment box. I will do my best to answer it live. Cool. Um, I'm going to keep plugging through. Um, what is psychic training and how does it work? Uh, great question. So I get this a lot and I, I decided to include it in my video this time because this is one, one of the more common questions I get in my email inbox inbox. Excuse me. Um, so psychic training is basically understanding your abilities on a fuller, newer level and being able to hone in on them and learn how to really step into them, right? Um, so it's being able to discern, like we were talking about before, there are all these different types of psychic abilities. So firstly, we go into psychic diagnostics and we start thinking about, okay, or not thinking about viewing, right? Through listening, I listen to your stories. And we start talking about how is psychic energy manifesting in your life? How are you experiencing it? Um, so we do that. And we also go internally, right? What does your own energy feel like? Who are you, right? Um, because that's key to psychic training. If you don't know what your own energy is, you're never going to know if you're experiencing your energy or someone else's energy. And this is work you can start doing at home as well. Um, so that's also a thing. Um, and then from there, we start kind of fleshing out and doing different, I have all these different cool exercises and tools and games and um, like just all the stuff where we literally just start playing with energy and, um, and in a really safe way, right? We also talk about safety and ethics and boundaries and um, courting and hooking, which if you don't know what that is, it's an earlier Q&A video, so you can check that out on YouTube. Um, but yeah, there are all these different things that we, we start doing and we start kind of playing around with it. And it, it also depends too on where the person really wants to go with it. We might tap into their astrological chart and see like, okay, what elements are sitting where and how can we use, utilize, like if, a, if a person has a lot of fire in their chart, we might try starting to work with some fire or working with some water to balance that out. Um, you know, stuff like that. So um, so there are a lot of different elements to it. Um, it's super, super fun. Um, but more than it being fun, it's, I think it's, you know, fun is the first part of the word fundamental, right? Um, and I do, I do believe that learning our psychic selves, if you're human, you're psychic. That's my tagline. It always has been. If you are human, you're psychic and learning how you experience energy is fundamental to your being. Um, it really just shows, it shows up. It shows up in everyday life, in every single circumstance, because everything that you're experiencing physically, you're also experiencing energetically on some level as well. And so when you can fine tune and learn, oh, okay, this is an energetic experience versus a physical experience, or this is something that's happening simultaneously, or oh, um, I'm feeling overcome with anxiety because the energy frequency in the room is something that I'm not accustomed to and learning how to calibrate your frequency to that so that it meshes, you know, stuff like that. Um, it really does completely change the way that you live a hundred percent. And for people who are walking this planet with diagnosed mental illnesses, um, it's a game changer. Because it really, it, you, you get this ability to look at your illness through 
in my opinion, what created it, because I believe that mental illness is created through not understanding your own ability. It's created through not being able to harness your own psychic energy or harnessing too much of other people's psychic energy and taking it into your field. And, um, and, the, and, and then, you know, things get confused and your brain gets confused because there are all these different things going on. So it manifests physically as a chemical imbalance and then, or a personality disorder, right? Which is not a chemical thing. So, so then here we are and you're, you have this mental illness and actually I shouldn't even put it in quotations because it is a mental illness, right? It's just that that's how it was created is energetically. Um, and, and I think that the misconception that, um, that big pharma and the ACA and the APA and all of these other associations, psychological counseling, social work, all of these things, right? I think that the big misconception that they have is that once a person has a mental illness, they have it for the rest of their lives. And I just don't agree with that. I think that mental illness is getting sick from not knowing how to harness your energy, not knowing how you are walking through the psychic and energetic realm and how it's walking through you because it very well could be. And that could be why you're experiencing the side effects that you're experiencing. Mental illness is a side effect of not understanding your psychic self. Um, so that was my long-winded answer as to what psychic training is. Um, another question that I get a lot of the time to just to kind of segue into this is what is the best way to start working with you and are your rates listed on your website? So, um, so the best way to start working with me, if you're wanting to work with me in a, in a psychic training or metaphysical inner guidance um, capacity, um, and, and metaphysical inner guidance would be looking at kind of the emotions that come along with all of this, right? And weeding through, um, you know, being able to talk about all of the experience because there's so much stigma around it. There's so much idea that, oh, you're psychic, you're of the devil, or you wear a turban and a crystal ball or, or you know, whatever it is that... Um, that it's really about the metaphysical inner guidance sessions are more about being able to walk through how not feeling seen in your psychic abilities or not feeling okay in them has affected you throughout your life. And so, and, and in your current life still even. And so being able to kind of weed through and, and look at all of that, listen, I want to hear your stories. I want to hear all of these stories of, you know, you seeing your imaginary friend, Ricky, who is playing with the toy train by your bed and your mom didn't believe you. Or I want to hear the story about you seeing these crazy demons standing over you one night and your cousin not believing you. I want to hear the stories of you experiencing knowing that this huge thing was going to happen and nobody believed you and then it did and they told you that you were this crazy person and you caused it. You wouldn't believe how many times I've heard that story, right? Where somebody has a precognitive experience, a, a psychic experience that happens before um, you, you get the psychic in information before the actual event occurs, right? People come into my office all the time with these awful stories of having had precognitive experiences and then blamed for them. People who were blamed for their grandfather's heart attacks who they saw coming beforehand, or people who were blamed for the fire that happened at the church before, it, you know, I mean, like just all of these crazy things that like, how could a person just energetically cause that? Which yes, there is that fine line between manifestation and precognition, but you know, I'm getting preachy, so I'm going to stop. Anywho, <laughs> I talk so much guys. Uh, I'm I'm just in, I'm happy that you enjoy sitting here and listening to it. So and that it's helpful in some way shape or form. So, um what's the best way to start working with you? Either way, whether it's psychic training or metaphysical inner guidance, um we're going to start with a consultation. So it's going to be the exact same thing either way. We will meet up if it's in person, we'll meet at my office, which is at the Wellness Co Collective in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, I'm there on Thursdays. Um, or we can meet online if you're not in town. Um, and we'll kind of do the working out through email as to what platform uh, you want that to happen on. Um, I use a, a couple of different platforms. Um, so we just set up that meeting time and then we go for 90 minutes from there and that's the consultation. Um, 
And then after that, we get to decide if we, or you get to decide rather, if you want to continue the work with me or by yourself, or um, you know, if you wanna, if you're so excited, you wanna dive in, you're like, oh my gosh, yes, I wanna do this for the next three months of my life automatically, um, then you can choose one of the packages that I have available as well. So those are all listed on my website. If you go to yourwaytoself.com slash services, um, there are going to be three different levels that you can choose from. So the first level is called the doorknob, and that's where you'll find the consultation, um, the psychic psychic training, psychic, or metaphysical inner guidance, and then you'll also find what's called soul family sessions. So that's if you're a parent and wanna come in with your child, or you wanna come in with your spouse or your partner, or, um, or your sister, or just a really good friend, and you guys want to do psychic training together and work on each other or you want to like work out some stuff energetically together and you want to kind of help have that third person there who can kind of assess what energy patterns are happening and how to work around that so those are the three options that are listed under the doorknob so if you click you can actually I've been having some issues with this people don't know that you can actually click the doorknob um, but if you click those words um, the doorknob. It'll lead you to all of those services, all of the pricing, everything. Um, uh, and then the second tier is uh, the keys, and that would be just kind of one-off sessions. So if you want to get your numerological chart done or a card reading or um, peek into your astrology or um, what else do I offer on there? Uh, energy reading or energy work. Um, if you want any of that stuff, that would be on tier two and you would click the keys. It's clickable. Um, and then the third tier is called the framework. You can also click on that and that shows you, um, uh, where that shows you what upcoming or what I do for workshops. And I do do private workshops. If you're having a party or something like that and you're like, Oh, this would be really fun. She can come. Um, then we can do that as well. Um, and as far as retreats go, I've not yet had a doorway to self retreat. Um, I know that it's been kind of floating out there that one was going to happen in May, um, but we're looking at June now, potentially. So more information will be around for that very soon. So I hope that that answers that question for people. Um, okay. Suzel says, what about availability in Ann Arbor? <laughs> Susan, I love you. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for asking that. So uh, Doorway to Self has been demanded out, um, out in East Michigan quite a bit, and I'm really excited. I wasn't going to, to do this on here, um, but this feels cool anyways, so I'm going to do it. Um, I, I'm really excited to announce that I have found an office space in Ann Arbor that I can be in by the hour. Um, so if you live on the east side of the, uh, side of the state and you want to do an in-person session rather than a video session, um, I will be available on probably one to two days per month. Um, and I'll have those days solidified. I'll probably try to put them in my events calendar. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to work out the logistics of that just yet, but um, but know that it's coming, know that it's, it's pretty much here. Um, and, uh, I'm really excited about it because there are just some incredible, incredible people on that side of the state. Stu Susel being one of them. So, um, yeah, thanks for giving me ample ammo for that plug there, Suze. I appreciate you. All right. No Instagram questions, no other Facebook questions. I'm going to quick make sure I did not miss any questions here because sometimes Facebook likes to sneak them out I don't know why that's kind of bizarre after every video I've finished you're welcome Suze after every video I've finished I found one question that I've missed from someone and I always feel really badly about it because I'm like ah, Facebook why didn't you show this to me earlier so I'm wondering if that's gonna happen this time and I don't know if that's because people's accounts are more private or in their settings or I don't I don't know quite how that works so let's see where are we at on time here we have about 10 minutes left um, so uh, yeah, if you have any questions, you can stick them in the box. I probably have time for about two more, and I'm going to check my list and make sure I got through everything from last time because I kind of jumped around a wee bit. 
Okay. Um, I do have this broad question that I've heard coming up a lot in, in society, and I'm probably going to eventually do a full video on it, but I figured I'd put it in here anyways. Oh, here we go. Here's a question. Saved by the bell. Saved by Randy. Hi, Randy. Hello, any chance with interviews with recent jobs I've applied for? Thanks. So, um, so Randy, I appreciate you and I appreciate this question. Um, you just made me realize perhaps I need to make this title a little bit clearer. So this is more of a forum for um, people who are trying to learn themselves in terms of psychic ability. Um, but you raise a really important question because, um, and I'm actually surprised this is the first one of these I've gotten on here. Um, people hear, and this is part of the stigma stuff, people hear the term psychic and they immediately think, oh, this person has all of the answers, right? Um, and so I really want to challenge you um, to sit with that, right? Sit with this idea of these interviews and this, these uh, the recent jobs you've applied for. Um, I'm sending you luck and energy, by the way, if you'll accept it, if that's ethically okay with you, um, because I, I hope that you get them if they're if they're um, best aligned with you. Um, I do do readings for people. Um, I don't tend to do them that frequently, and here's why. Because I feel like I feel like in some ways readings give solace to people, and that's a very valid thing, right? Readings give a lot of peace of mind, or they can. On the other hand, readings can also evoke more questions or more anxiety. Um, and they also completely take the power away from the person who's being read in terms of being able to just go into their intuition and, and try to use their own psychic gifts to answer the question for themselves. Um, so So yeah, I'm I'm not quite in the space to do a reading at this point because I'm in a completely different space. I'm like teaching, um, but I do appreciate your your question, your inquiry, your inquiry, and I I really want to um, I I want to just kind of instill this question in you of okay, why am I asking? Why do I need to know? And of course, you know, with job interviews, there's always that anxiety over. Well, which one am I going to get? Am I going to get any of them? And especially if you need you need income, right? So that's that's an anxious thing. Um, and I really appreciate that you're that you're going through that right now. Um, so, but uh, but yeah, if you do decide to go to a reader, if you're in Grand Rapids, um, Margaret Nicholson is fabulous. She is my favorite reader in Grand Rapids. Um, if you're, if you're looking for specifically somebody who's just going to tell you stuff, because even when I give a reading, it's more of a reflection of who, you, who you are and what's going on in the current moment. I very rarely tell about future events or anything like that because it's, it's against my personal ethics. Um, I really believe that the future needs to play out as it's going to play out. Um, and that as somebody who's deemed a psychic, we then expect those things to happen. And so we, I, we, we can a lot of the time, that's where this manifestation thing comes in. We can a lot of the time create those situations ourselves, right? So how dangerous would it be if a psychic told you, oh, you're not gonna get any of those jobs, right? And then all of a sudden you're thinking that and you're thinking that and that energy is permeating and permeating the situation. And the next thing you know, you don't get any of the jobs and you're like, oh, the psychic was right. Well, guess what? You have the power to change that. If you feel that those jobs are totally aligned with you and that this is what you need to do and this is your calling and this is your right path, you can start taking steps to manifest one of those jobs, whichever one resonates with you the most. So this is more about empowerment than about, um, you know, oh, here's the answer. Now, you know, go do your thing. Um, so I, I hope that's helpful. Um, Randy says, thanks, I will accept. Uh, how can I increase my abilities besides meditation? Um, 
So uh, you're welcome. And thank you so much for taking that feedback so well. I really appreciate it. I've had people come up to me and ask for readings and then get pissed when I give that, that, them that answer. Um, so thank you so much for, for that. Um, you are an awesome human being. I appreciate you. Let's see. How can I increase my abilities besides meditation? So um, yes. So Firstly, like I said, it's just there there is a um there is a nice little map that I like to use. Um so firstly is fleshing out what your abilities actually are. What abilities do you have in this moment? Are you seeing things? Are you hearing things? Are you smelling things? Are you tasting things? Are you feeling things? What are are you knowing things? What are you doing? Okay? So firstly, flesh that out. What's going on there? Um, secondly, start what, what I call tracking. Okay. So you're going to start tracking every single time you are feeling someone else's emotions or feeling emotions really strongly or, um, seeing things or hearing things or having vivid dreams or whatever it is. You're going to keep either a mental log or a physical log on your phone or, or a little notepad. And you're going to write all of those experiences down and start tracking them and start seeing, oh, okay, I start smelling sweet oranges when I'm with Stephanie. Oh, okay, well, that's interesting. Or, oh, I always see a vision of a pigeon when I'm about to walk into work, you know, and you, you start noticing these patterns of things that happen. And I've had clients I've been working with who don't, um, they don't even realize that there's a pattern until they start tracking it. Like they'll come into my office the first day and they're like, Oh yeah, it's this weird thing. It's like, you know, um, some, some evenings I'll just get this really, uh, really weird sound in my ear, right? It's like this really loud pitch and it's always the same pitch, but it, there's never any sequence to it. And then the next thing you know, they're coming into the office the, the next time or two times later and they're like, Oh my gosh, I never noticed it. But every time I was hearing that pitch, it was always 5.02 p.m. Or it was always right after I ate a turkey sandwich. Or it was always right before um, uh, my brother would call within 24 hours or something like that. Right. So, so it's that last one is a little bit of a stretch. But, you know, it's the point is, is that there's a pattern there that the person did not necessarily realize. Um, I had one woman come in who said she'd, she'd always see this vision of a dock and it was just like this random thing and she never understood what would ha like what it had to do anything with. And the next, the next time she came into the room, she was like, oh wait, I started tracking it and I noticed that every time I would see this vision of a dock, it would start raining within the hour. Um, and so she was, that was her way of sensing the rain was coming. Um, so I would say start tracking it. And the more you start tracking it, the stronger it's going to get. Once you get to that stage, um, it might be, might be good to start, uh, working with someone, whether that's me or someone else who does, uh, psychic training. Um, I'm, I know of two people, um, both I believe are in Ohio. Um, other than that, I don't, I don't quite know anybody who, who does, um, this type of work, but, um, one of them is, um, Michelle Belanger and she actually does go through hers is religiously affiliated in terms of, um, it is very pagan. So if you don't agree with that, then I would stay away from that. And then the other person is, um, Travis. Oh goodness. Travis. Why can't I name? I will, um, I'll look it up and I'll post it in the comments when this video is done. Anywho, um, thank you so much for those questions. It's really wonderful. I'm just going to check Insta to make sure there's nothing else here. And okay, you guys, so that's it. It's been about an hour and I'm going to hop off. Thank you so, so much for every single one of your questions and for staying on here and listening to me vent and ramble about all of these uh, very cool things. I think anyways, I think you do too, cause you're still here. Um, <laughs> So thank you so much. If you want to work with me again, my website is doorway to self.com. And if you want to know about other upcoming events, like more Facebook lives or workshops or 
anything else, um, you can sign up for my email list once you get on there. And I do do weekly energy updates through that email as well. Every Monday morning is when I email. I try not to email more than that unless there's a new, uh, a new something or other going on. Um, so please sign up for the email list. That's how you'll get the most updated information about events, um, all sorts of stuff. Also, I do have these new babies that I made during the full blood moon. Um, so I have clean and clear, um, which is all about um, being able to clear your insides if you're an empath. I also have it in spray form. If you're wanting to clear a room, you can't light stuff. Um, and then I also have create, which is also about um, just being able to create. It's just amazing. So you can read more about that on Facebook. Instagram's about to kick me off. So I'm gonna go, love you. Rachel Eggerson, doorway to self, come check me out.